Hello, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming another tag video for you. This is the Shakespeare book tag. I saw it done by Trisha at Tell Her a Story and the original creator of the tag was Cara from Wild Book Garden so I will put both their videos down below. I wasn't tagged to do this video but I'm a massive Shakespeare geek so I couldn't resist trying this tag out. So question one is much ado about nothing. Your favourite bickering couple who everyone knows really care about each other and this can be a romance or a friendship. So I've picked Kizzy and Jenks from The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. They are the ship's engineers. The ship is the, the wayfarer and they they tease each other and wind each other up. They're essentially like siblings even though they aren't related but that's the sort of relationship they have. But they also really support and encourage each other especially when some of the some of the difficult things, some of the tough times that the ship goes through, they're always there helping each other out, supporting each other and it's just a really lovely friendship that they have. So they're my one of my favourite bickering couples. Question two is Measure for Measure, a book whose plot or genre is really hard to explain to other people. There are a few that I was torn between for this one but I've settled for Brother and Ice by Alicia Kopp. I've mentioned this a couple of times on my channel uh, I received this as part of a subscription to And Other Stories, which is an independent publisher. And I really don't know very well how to explain this book. It's part research into polar exploration and part diary. It's part... See, I'm, strugg I'm struggling now <laughs> even to explain it. It's about the, the main character who I believe is also called Alicia, so I'm not even sure if it's semi-autobiographical, is about her experiences of having a brother who has autism and how it feels sometimes like she's communicating to him through ice and that links with the theme of polar exploration. It, it defies explanation. I've never read anything else quite like it and I don't... I couldn't tell you what genre it is. The blurb on the back describes it as a hybrid novel, part research notes, part fictionalised diary and part travel log. It's, but it's really beautifully written. I really, really enjoyed reading it and I really highly recommend it, but I couldn't tell you. I can't really explain to you <laughs> very well what it's about. But it's got some lovely photos in it as well. And it was just a really interesting mix of different genres and types of things. So yeah, this is the book that defies explanation. Um, but if you do read it, let me know what you think of it because I really loved it. Question three is A Midsummer Night's Dream, a book featuring fairies or elves. So for this one I picked a book that I haven't actually read yet, but I'm really looking forward to getting around to it. And it was adapted a couple of years ago by the BBC for TV for a mini series. And I really loved that, which was what made me want to read the book. And that is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. This book is about two magicians in 18th century, sorry, early 19th century England, uh, where magic has mostly fallen out of practice, but these two magicians are still practicing it. But one accidentally makes a deal with the Fae and he doesn't really understand what he's done. Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. I'm also really cross. I tried to take the label off this and I got it from a charity shop and whatever type of sticker they've used, that is not going to come off easily and it's really annoying me now. Um, anyway, so this is a book uh, featuring fae, uh, featuring fairies and I'm really looking forward to reading it. The TV adaptation was brilliant so I'm looking forward to seeing if the book lives up to that, which I'm sure it will. It'll probably be even better, usually in my experience. Question four is Hamlet, an underutilised female character. So for this I'm picking a book that I recently read, I've actually just returned it to the library today and that was The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne and I thought the character of Catherine Goggin, who is the mother of the central character, the birth mother, I thought she could have featured more in the storyline. So Cyril, the main character, is given up for adoption, Catherine's unmarried, in 1945 when she when she has him when she's pregnant with him and so she gives him up for adoption and then she does appear throughout the novel even before Cyril finds out who she is in relation to him but she only features very briefly and 
she's a brilliant character and the first section of the novel is actually the events leading up to Sybil's birth and that was really gripping and she came across as a really interesting character so I was a bit disappointed that she didn't then feature more in, in the novel until the very end. Question five is the sonnets, choose your favourite poem. Um, I love poetry and I read a lot of poetry but I can never remember after reading it what poems I've loved and why so I know there's quite a few famous ones that I really like but I just couldn't think off the top of my head what they are. I'm reading a bit more modern poetry now and I recently just finished this short collection called The Mind Body Problem by Katha Pollitt and you can see I've tabbed a few in there that I really enjoyed. Um, one of my favourites in here was called Lilacs in September and it's about how even after a storm this lilac bush has survived and is still flowering and it's just a message about, it's only a short poem about uh, resilience even during storms and how we can all find that strength to survive. So this was a really good little collection. I try and always have a book of poetry on the go because I really do enjoy reading poetry and I've read quite a lot of classic poets so I'm trying to get more into a bit of modern poetry as well now. Question six, Richard III, a protagonist willing to do anything to get what they want. So the first person that came to mind for this for me was Becky Sharp in Vanity Fair. It's been a long time since I've read this, I am overdue a reread of it, but I remember Becky doing anything she could think of to get her way to to move herself forward in society. It's actually on my frontispiece there, it calls it a novel without a hero. So she, she is, she's an anti-hero really. And I remember I'd seen, there was a film made for it when I was a teenager with I think it was with Reese Witherspoon and I'd watched the film and really enjoyed it and then I remember being when I read the book realizing how much more conniving Becky is in the book and how they tried to make her nicer and more likeable in the film and then when I watched the film again I was really disappointed with it because actually I preferred her in the book because they made her too nice and she lost her sharp edge and became too much of a victim like she is definitely not a victim in this yeah becky sharp is your ultimate character willing to do anything it takes to get her way question seven anthony and cleopatra your favorite trope bookish byword historical figure etc for which you still haven't found that perfect book so for this one i've actually picked shakespeare himself He's a fascinating historical figure to me, particularly because there are periods of his life that we don't know anything about. There's so much speculation about how someone from a small town like Stratford-upon-Avon could have achieved the success he did. And just, I just love his, all his plays. I've read them all. I've seen about half of them, whether that's on stage or adaptations on screen. The way some people have a bucket list, I just have the Shakespeare list. So my life ambition is to see every Shakespeare play performed on stage and I just find him fascinating and I've read a couple of novels that have really been disappointing that have tried to recreate him as a character or featured him as a character. The closest thing I found to my perfect Shakespeare adaptation is this film Bill which was made by the same people who made the Horrible Histories TV series. It's uh, a similar style to the Monty Python films with a few actors playing all the characters it is hilarious yeah i just love the way shakespeare is portrayed in this but this is a film and not a novel so i've yet to find the perfect novel that captures shakespeare's character for me and even histories of him so i read a book a couple of years ago which was a history or meant to be sort of a biography of him and a history of theatres in london and it just didn't live up to what i wanted it to i'm currently reading Bill Bryson's biography of Shakespeare, which is, I am enjoying. But yeah, I'd love to read a novel that really captures him really well, and I haven't yet. Question eight is Titus Andronicus, a lesser known work by a popular author, which you want more people to read. So for this, I have gone for A Grief Observed by C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis is obviously best known for The Chronicles of Narnia, which are a staple among children's classics. They are my favourite children's books still. I reread them every couple of years and still love them every time. All of them. My favourite is The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I really, really love that series. And I've also read quite a lot of C.S. Lewis's more theological writings and some of them are fairly well known, but this is my favourite one because he wrote this after his wife died 
and he'd previously written about pain. He'd written another book called The Problem of Pain, which was quite theoretical, and you could see him arguing how a just God could allow suffering. And it, it in itself is a very uh, good book, but this is so much better because this changes his th theories into actual experience and is just a really powerful outpouring of grief and how he manages to come through his grief and still find God at the end of it. It was actually originally published anonymously and one of his friends recommended it that he read it to help him cope with his grief at losing his wife, which I think is quite ironic. I actually wrote an essay about this book for my masters and got my best ever mark for any essay in my life ever. So that just shows, I think, how much I love this book. So yeah, if you haven't read it, I really highly recommend it. Um, maybe paired with the problem of pain as well. If you're interested in the topic of God's goodness when there's suffering in the world, reading this and a problem of pain together will really, I think, personally could help you work through those questions. Question nine, King Lear, a complex female villain or anti-hero? So for this one, I've thought outside the box maybe a little bit, but the, this thing is characterised as female. So I've gone for uh, the book Siren by Kira Cass and the character of the ocean, who is in this book, a sentient being who rescues girls who are drowning but turns them into sirens so in this book all the water the, the ocean is a living being and she has to be fed and she's fed by ships sinking and every so often she she will rescue a young woman who is drowning and turn her into a siren and the sirens cause more ships to sink so the ocean continues to be fed. The young women serve the ocean for a hundred years and then she allows them to return to land but they have their memories wiped so they can't remember anything about what has happened to them over the years and they are, they are at the age they were when they were drowning so they don't age at all in the years that they're serving the ocean. In this book the central character Carlin falls in love with a human and the ocean isn't happy about that and it's a really, I, I really enjoyed this book, I raced to it, I love Kira Cass as an author so if you're looking for a bit of a twist on the sort of mermaid siren type stories this is, uh, to, to me I thought this was a really clever one and just look at the gorgeous cover, I mean all her covers are gorgeous on all her books but I really like this one particularly. Question 10. The Taming of the Shrew. Choose two polarising books, one you loved and one you hated. So I picked two different books from the same genre here, which is YA dystopian. The book that I hated, which a lot of people on booktube seem to really love, is the second book in the Maze Runner series, which was The Scorch Trials. I read this a couple of years ago and it put me into the worst reading slump I think I've experienced in a very long time. I barely made it through that book, I don't know why I kept going with it because I really did not enjoy it. I'd really enjoyed The Maze Runner and when I got to the end I really wanted to to read the sequel and I couldn't straight away, I had to wait until I could get it from the library and so it was about, it was actually quite a long time afterwards, I would think I was doing a, a reading challenge, a year long reading challenge at the time and I couldn't fit it in so it had been about nine months between reading The Maze Runner and picking up, finally picking up The Scorch Trials. So I'd built up anticipation over all that time and then I started reading The Scorch Trials and I hated it. It was so slow and nothing really happened and all the main characters were really irritating and I was just so bored and I kept persevering because I thought it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better and then it didn't. So much so that I, didn't even bother to finish off the series. I just couldn't cope with James Dashner's writing anymore and actually that book made me rethink my entire rating system of books, which I will go into at some point, I'm sure. As for a book that other people didn't enjoy, that I really love, I picked for this one the final book in the Divergent series, which was Allegiant. I picked this because when I read it, I read it at the same time as a lot of my friends and I was the only one out of our group of friends that liked the ending, everyone else hated it, but 
I really <laughs> enjoyed it and thought it really worked. Um, well, enjoyed, maybe not the right word, but I definitely thought it worked and could understand why it ended the way it did. So I really loved this as a finale to the series, but I know a lot of my friends did not enjoy that. Question 11 is, give me your hands if we be friends. And this is the invitation to tag people. Now this is a fairly old tag at this point and I don't know people well enough yet to know who are Shakespeare fans or not. So if you're watching this and you are a Shakespeare fan, please feel free to uh, do this tag and you can say that I tagged you. And even if you're not a Shakespeare fan, but you like the questions and you can think of good answers to them, then please go ahead and, and consider yourself tagged by me. So thank you so much for watching. That's the end of the tag video and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.